Hello everyone, this is Lady and the Violin and today I complete my first year and three months journey of learning the violin. I will reveal everything I have learned so far, my new violin, and also what I plan to accomplish for my second year of learning. Since I'm self-teaching, I put together a lesson folder that combines online resources along with my first Suzuki book lessons. This is my lesson folder here. And um, the first few pages that I have here are the first lessons that I've learned. I downloaded from a YouTube channel known as the Violin and Piano teacher, the online violin and piano teacher. I think that's what she goes by. Her name is Allison Sparrow and she put together the simple lessons for very, very beginners. Um, they help me get adapted to the violin very much. So I highly recommend this channel and these lessons. I will leave a link in the description box below if you're interested in getting started with these lessons. I used these lessons probably for about four months into my violin playing because it's it, it helped me not only learn how to read notes enough to play the violin, but it also is serves as a really good warm-up as a beginner so that you can get accustomed to playing a good sound on the violin. So um, it starts out with open string exercises, then you can do the first finger exercises, the second finger exercises, and then it goes into third and fourth finger exercises. And believe me, these were very useful to me. So if you're just starting out with the violin or if you feel that you need to work more on, on the foundations of playing, I highly recommend these little exercises. Another good foundation is scales. So get any scale book and learn your scales. The first pages of the Suzuki book one is based on the A major scale. So the first scales that I learned were the one octave A major scale and the one octave D major scale. It's very useful to learn these scales. That way when you learn a new song that's based on those scales, it will be easy to learn. So here I have, I have scales that I'm still working on. I still practice, of course, the A major and a D major scale, but every time I learn a scale, I try to add on a, another one. So here I have the G major two octave scale that I've learned very well by now. Um, then I have the E natural, E natural minor one octave scale. That one's fun to play. And then I have the A major two octave scale. That one's interesting. Once you learn the A major two octave scale, you don't have to play the A major one octave scale because it's all in here. So uh, then we have the C major one octave scale and the B flat major two octave scale. This one is very interesting, very fun to play. Um, and that's that's where I'm at now. So as far as scales, I'm up to the B major two octave scales and I'm trying to practice those in every practice session and and I do my best to um, play them in tune as often as possible because intonation you gotta I am very obsessed about intonation so um, scales are very important for me so those are my scale lessons and then here I have these etudes um, that I have not, I have to be honest, I haven't approached these too much because they're a little overwhelming by the amount of notes that are in one bar. But I do plan to uh, focus on these once I finish the first Suzuki book. So this is on hold for now. Another uh, good uh, resource known as Violin Inspiration. I will leave the link below. Um, I forgot her name, but it's she's a very nice, um, beautiful violinist who um, also provides um, 
resources for beginner violinists and one of them is a songbook for beginners and in that songbook you'll find happy birthday and happy birthday is one of those songs where if you play any instrument I feel like that's one of the songs you should know so I in my search I ran into um, by the Vial Inspiration beginner songbook and it had happy birthday and of course I had to download it so it's part of my lesson book now and I have learned it and I've even learned the variations of it so um, uh, so I highly recommend you download that songbook and follow Vial Inspiration as well so and then of course I have my Suzuki book lessons. I've learned all of these beginner songs and they've been a joy to learn. In between those songs I have other songs that I, I've been interested in. This is an arrangement I put together using MuseScore. Um, it's Ode to Joy and usually when you go online you find Ode to Joy and it's about this short, right? It's only O to Joy and you start on a low F, but I wanted the melody to have a bit of a climax and end in a higher notes. So, um, and, I, and I know that was possible because when I took lessons back in junior high school, um, we had a version of O to Joy that had a that started off on low F and then it climaxed up to a high F. So based on that memory, I went ahead and arranged my version of Ode to Joy and I will record this version during the year and post it and I will also post um, the, the notes to it in case you're interested in learning this as well. The more you go into the Suzuki book lesson, it gets more and more challenging. So starting from Etude, I started having a, a bit of difficulty um, adjusting. So what I did, and this is what's recommended as well, is to highlight the points where you have the most trouble with and you just practice those parts and forget about the rest until you perfect the parts that you have trouble with. That way you practice more efficiently and you practice your trouble spots and you try to iron out your trouble spots and that has been working for me. So from etude on I have a lot of trouble spots that I work on and um, uh, I've, I've surpassed etude, I went on to minuet one, ran into more trouble spots that I practiced with and then um, Minuet 2, also more trouble spots. It got a little more difficult. But believe me, once you work on your trouble spots and you're able to play the song through, it's so rewarding. So I highly recommend you use this um, uh, mode of practice because it's more efficient and you'll be able to learn your favorite tunes better and you'll be able to play them better. So. And then in between that and Minuet 3, I went ahead and arranged another tune that I so wanted to learn so badly. Um, and it's called Las Mañanitas. It's a Mexican folk song. And uh, this song is usually played by a mariachi on birthdays or on even on Mother's Day. And it's a beautiful tune. I, I really wanted to learn it. So I, I went ahead and put together an arrangement that worked out, in my opinion. So I will record this soon enough, hopefully this year, and post the notes as well if you're interested in learning it as well. So, and that brings me to the last song I've learned from the Suzuki book lessons, which is Minuet 3. And I'm currently working on this treble spot. Uh, which is the first bar of the second part. It's uh, very troublesome for, for me because um, it uses the fourth finger on the E string and then it goes back to um, G and then to A and back to fourth and it's 
it's very challenging so um, recently I've been getting used to hitting the notes and I'm very happy about it so now I'm practicing it, the performance aspect of it by um, playing along with a metronome and also playing along with a background accompaniment. After that I only have uh, two more songs to learn from the Suzuki book lesson and I'll be happy when I complete it. After the Suzuki book one I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I think I'm, I'm I already downloaded um, a few beginner con concertos that um, I did some research and there's some concertos that are all in first position so that's what I know so that's what I downloaded and I plan to learn those after I complete my Suzuki book one lesson. So when I started playing violin, I got overexcited and got three lesson books as well as the Suzuki book. I got the Essential Elements for Strings, book one, two, and three. I'm still on book one <laughs> because I felt like this, the Suzuki lesson works so well for me. It's so much fun to learn every piece on, in that book that I have trouble conquering this book um, at the same time. But this, I do recommend this book if you're a, a beginner because it really, I use it to help me um, read notes. Um, and also, as you can see, I have my bookmarks here because I go through this book as, I guess, a way kind of like an etude book um, where I just study um, the lessons but I don't try to learn them by heart and I approach it with an open mind and um, learn the lessons by reading the notes that's how I'm doing it and I currently I'm stuck on pages 33 to I believe 33 to 36 and the reason why I'm stuck on these lessons is because these pages approach the uh, C natural F F flat or F natural notes that, um, and they're the second finger half steps and those are very difficult for me to get in tune so it's a good exercise that I do um, probably once or twice a week so I can practice those notes um, with my fingering and so I do recommend this book if you don't want to do the Suzuki method uh, use something like this and it will help you learn your fingerings it'll help you with the essentials so this is what I do and um, I do plan to finish this book once I finish the Suzuki lessons as well. So overall, at a year and three months, I have learned several songs from the Suzuki book lessons. I've learned several songs from online resources, and I've also used other lesson books to self-teach violin, and I'm pretty happy with my progress. Um, I've learned most of the beginner scales that are supposed to be learned in the first year so uh, it's 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 good progress so that's all I have for today if you have any questions comments or even suggestions please leave them in the in the comment section below I'd be, I'd be happy to hear from you hit that like or subscribe button to see more videos like this one and I hope to see you next time thanks for watching bye